case you have your Bible, let's turn to Romans chapter 3, verse 4, and this is a Bible church. I might say it's a Baptist church. Yeah, but it's a Bible church, okay? And uh, we want to share some things that trust to be a blessing. I, I do realize it is Valentine's Day. Yes, sir? You might start on yet. That's not on yet. Okay. I thought I already had it on. Other way. All the way the other way. Yeah, yeah, the other way. The other one. Okay. We on that? Yeah, nope. All the way. Okay. It shows us on there. There you go. Huh? Yeah. You got it. Okay. All right. Sorry about the technical difficulty there. Uh, but it is Valentine's Day. I've realized that. So we want to talk to you about several things. And it's not necessarily a Valentine message, but I'm sure we can tie it into it. And basically, the, when we think in terms of Valentine, think in terms of our loved ones. And it's a way to show or do something extra special to let them know that we do care and that we do think about it. But here in Romans chapter 3, verse 4, Notice what it says, God forbid, and uh, I don't know about you, but that you get your attention when it says, God forbid, yea, let God be true. And it's amazing how many times we fail to realize that, for lack of a better description, we're calling God a liar. And when I say that, what do you mean, preacher? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> uh, if we say, well, I just can't afford to tithe, I can't afford to give to the work of God, I, I, I just can't witness to people because it's just too hard talking about Jesus. I just don't have time to read my Bible. I just, you know, are you getting the picture? How many times are we guilty of calling God a liar? How many times say, Lord, I just don't know what to do in this situation. I just don't know how it's going to work. It's the same. God said I can trust him. And so many times, things that we do that are, I say, anti-Christian, uh, anti-God, when we're, we're resting upon ourselves instead of upon God, we're saying, God, you're a liar. Wow. I'm sad. And I wish I could tell you that pastors have never been guilty of doing anything like that. But move along. But every man, hmm, a liar. Okay? So if there's ever any type of judgment that you have to make, Look at what the person's saying, and then what God says, and know that whatever they're saying, next to God, it's not true. And so as we look on in this verse, it goes on, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome them, when thou art judged. So God said, basically, if we follow him, we're following truth. If we follow him, we're doing right. And even though the world may get upset with you and say, man, are you calling me a sinner? Well, <laughs> uh, yeah. Are you calling me a liar? Uh, well, uh, if we follow what God says in this word, we can say, well, that's what God calls you. That's what God says you are. Because God says we're all sinners. And I, I'm so glad that there's somebody called saved sinners. <laughs> Aren't you glad that I'm in that group? I'm a saved sinner. And I'm so thankful for that distinction that God gives us. So simply here, the thing I want to emphasize, it says, let God be true. So let's learn to accept what God shares with us, what God wants to do in our lives, with this accepted, and realize that God wants to help us. And so God is totally truth. We can always know that whenever we follow God's plan, we're following the truth and following what's true. So notice, first of all, our point that we have is, concerning the person of salvation and Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other the name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved and again how exciting there's only one way of salvation and yet if you were to talk to the world and say well the Buddhists have a certain way the Muslims have another way and, and, and we just go on and on and even among the Christians the so-called Christians. It's amazing how many have you working your way to heaven, have you working to maintain your salvation, and yet that's not what we see in the scriptures. So again, we need to follow God's scriptures, as it says very clearly that God has the answer and that God is the person of our salvation and that there's no other name to get saved under. It's just Jesus. Jesus is truly the door to heaven. Notice what it says in John 14, 6. John 14, 6, it, to Jesus speaking, Jesus saith unto him, 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The only way we can get to our heavenly Father is through Jesus. And, and as he clearly says, I am the way, I am the truth. We can trust him completely. We can trust him with our soul. We can trust him with our life. We can trust him with our salvation. We can trust him with our loved ones. So again, Jesus makes it very clear. He says, I am the truth. All those other ways, and some may be so close to salvation, but if it's not God's plan, it's not going to work. I don't care how close it might sound or how close it might be. Folks, we have to accept God's plan, accept what Jesus has done for us. There is no other way to heaven except through Jesus' plan. And then notice what it says in John 10, 9. And again, I, I, I like the way it's worded here. It simply says this, I am the door. And when you think about the door, it's amazing that uh, there's, there's a door over here right now. And uh, Brother Chuck has shared with me several times. It's actually something stinks in there. So uh, anyhow, uh, you know, and, and all sorts of funny thoughts come to my mind when I can say, well, who's in there with you? You know, whatever. But I, I never say that to you. Okay. <laughs> and of course, the Charlie's on the phone. Who's in there with you? you know? But it, it, they say it stinks in there. And of course, we blame it on the raccoons. And I think they're the guilty parties because they try to, they have a raccoon party in there. But anyhow, uh, what I'm trying to say is you open that door and you know what's going to happen when you open that door. It's just a certain, no worry, we're working on it, and hopefully we'll have that all taken care of. It may smell like cedar or something else when we get through it, but it's going to smell different, okay? But, uh, and, and so there's some doors, it's it exciting to open. And like, you know, right now, we're thinking in terms of July, somewhere around July the 5th. Our kids are, are going to come back, and, 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 and it's going to come. And I can see my wife running over me to get to the door. Let the kids in! <laughs> you know, and, and how excited. And then we look and go, wow, look at how they've grown. Hey, they've all gotten taller. Here. And Jen, you got bigger, too. Of course, she's expecting this, you know. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is there's certain people that you really look forward to seeing, you know. And so open that door. It's, it's an excitement that's there because it's excited to see who comes in. I, I was so excited Sunday, I, I was sharing with, uh, in our class, and of course you catch your own class today, but as I was sharing here in our class, I said, I, I have a friend, I hope to be here today, his name is John Smith, and I think everybody's going to really like him, and sure enough, he walked in the door. Now, man, and, I need that. and all I can see is a shadow because of the way my eyes are, but I look, uh, I think that's his silhouette, and I said, that's you, John? Yeah. He said, yeah, it's John, and it was exciting. So what I'm saying is, isn't it exciting? that Jesus is the door to heaven. He is the door to salvation. He is the door to our heavenly Father. So a very exciting door to open, to say the least. He said, I am the door. And again, I, I said to salvation. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. And so very, very exciting as we look at it that Jesus said that if we go in through him, salvation comes as we accept what he's done for us. And then he'll help us so we can grow uh, as we get in a better relationship with Jesus. And again, it's not that we get uh, our salvation come more sure. It's not that at all because once we're saved, we're saved. But we can learn more and more about our Savior and enjoy our salvation here on this earth before we get to heaven. We can enjoy it so much more as we understand what Jesus has done for us. So again, concerning the person of our salvation, isn't that exciting? We you make of all that is involved in it, and the fact that it is true, it is true, and we can trust God. He has never lied to us, and he never will. And then something else, concerning the plan of separation. And, and when I say that, I have so many thoughts that may come to a person's mind, someone might say, well, I know this couple, and they've gone through a separation, you know. And that's very, very sad when something like that happens. And then some others might say, well, they're separated from their loved ones. They're, they're uh, well, they're in a situation because they're in the military. They've shipped them out and, they're set to get, and, and there's a separation. And then there's some others say, well, something just happened in our family and everybody's doing their own thing and it's like we got our own separate causes and it, it, it's terrible. Well, what I'm saying here is we look in God's word that we need to learn how to separate ourselves from the world. And, and yet when I say it, I know that we're, we're always, you know, as long as we're here, we're going to be part of the world. <laughs> but 
But we don't need to be doing what the world is doing. We do, do not accept the world's system as our system for our life. We need to do things differently. And, and people should see that, you know, they're different. They're, they're kind of separate from the rest of the world. They, they don't do things like everybody else does. And folks, as a Christian, we should do things differently because of what God has done for us. So notice God's plan concerns separation. Yes, he wants us to separate ourselves from the world and from those things that would pull us away from God. Again, we need to separate from sin. We need to separate, if you please, to holiness. And then again, we need to separate, if you please, from those things that are false. And there's a lot of false teachings out there. There's a lot of false churches out there, a lot of false religions out there, uh, a lot of false uh, political parties, and I can go on about a list of all the things that we have uh, that are out there to distract us and cause us problems. But notice what it says in God's Word in John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So God again says that we need to separate to that which is true, which is him. We need to separate to his book and let it work in our lives. In 2 Corinthians 6, 17, Jesus says it this way. I, I say Jesus, the, the Lord, says, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Uh, I, I guess one way to explain this, and it may seem a little crude, but when our grandsons were living at our house, there was all sorts of things that happened. And because they were so young, there was times, I don't know how to say it, but they would mess up in their diapers. And when they mess up in their diapers, sometimes it could be pretty messy. And, and it could also be pretty stinky. And I mean, uh, anyhow, I, I caught myself separating myself from them quite often when things happened that way. And I, I didn't have this thing say, oh, I see that you're all messed up, John, but come here so I can hug you real good, okay? No, it was, it was kind of opposite. But as soon as they got clean, come here, Jonathan, come here, Jonathan, jump in my locker, man, and hug me and everything like that. You know, and then if something happened while I was in it, okay, you need to go see your mother, you need to go see your dad, <laughs> and, and that will take care of it. And, and what I'm saying, God loves us, and he wants to be as close to us as he can. But sometimes we need to have our diaper changed. Did I say that? Uh, but anyhow, we, we, we need to get things taken care of so that it's easier for God to love us. And nobody says that God always loves us. There's no condition on the fact that he loves us. But there's times that we can get closer to him when we have things right in our life. And we want to be close to him when things are right in our life. And that's one way we can tell that things are in a proper way in our life when we want to be with him. Instead of, well, I hope the Lord will come right now. This would be embarrassing. <laughs> How am I going to explain this through eternity? And so simply, as we look in the verse, it says, Wherefore come ye out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I said, I love my grandchildren. It's sure a lot easier to love them than clean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's true. But what I'm saying is, that's true concerning our God. It's amazing some of the messes that we can get in as Christians. And uh, what a sad thing that we do that sometimes. We just do things that we know better, but we still do the wrong thing. Second Timothy 2.19 says it in another way. It says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this still, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and that everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart." from iniquity. So God again is saying, stay away from that stinky stuff. Stay away from that stupid sin. Stay away from those things that, that pull you into the devil's realm. Stay away from those things that are part of the world. Don't do like the world. Don't lie like the world lies. Don't deceive others like the world does. Don't do things. And again, we say, well, that all goes back to the devil. And you're right to the point. But we're the ones that choose to do right or do wrong. And I know it's easy to do something like this. Well, the devil made me do it. <laughs> but you chose to do it. 
The devil doesn't suddenly think, okay, the devil told me to do this. I, I, I have no choice. I got to do it. No, we decide if we're going to do it or not do it. So then it's true when we decide to let the Spirit of God use us or not. We do our own thing so many times and how sad. So it's important to have separation in our life. And that separation can bring others to God. That separation that we, if you please, practice can help others to separate themselves from the world system to God's system, to God's salvation, instead of going through the world. And then one other thought before we finish tonight, and we might go get another one, I don't know. But concerning the praise by the saints, God is worthy of all praise. And again, how many times have people caused us embarrassment? Uh, I've been in many situations, and I have to say that a lot of times it happened at Walmart, okay? I'm not picking on you, Chuck, or Charlie. Uh, but I would be there, and something would happen. In one particular case, I remember this kid that was, he was real large for his age. He was, I think somebody told me he was nine years old, but I mean, he was big. He looked kind of like a samurai wrestler. Uh, and he just suddenly, he got upset with his grandma. But his grandma was there, and his mother was there, and a couple of siblings. And he wanted it was some type of candy bar. And he just reached out and grabbed it. And the grandma said, I'm standing firm. You put that back now. No. You put that back now. You understand? I have control here. You put it back. No. And the next thing I knew, they were wrestling. And this nine-year-old was almost as big as his grandma, probably out later. But anyhow, they were on the floor. And finally, his glasses fell off, and then he went ahead and bashed him. And they said, you broke your glasses. Good, good. You know, throw it all in them. And all the people at Walmart, they rushed over there. I say all the people at Walmart. The, the clerks and so forth. They all went over and said, can we help you? He said, we don't need any help. We got control here. And, and uh, well, he's doing this. He's doing that. And he's great. And the, no, no. Hey, it's under control. Leave us alone. We got under control. Oh, they didn't have it under control. <laughs> I mean, it was something terrible to see. It was frightening as this kid was telling his grandma and his mother what to do. And uh, he was in total control. Are you ready? What's so scary is he was out of control. But he was controlling that situation. And I, 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 it, it, you know what? That grandma and that mother, they weren't able to say, oh, thank you, Johnny, for what you did. You made such a scene, and you had everybody run around the store, and everybody was getting extra exercises because of you. We want to just praise you for the way that you control the whole situation. Well, folks, sometimes I think that's what we expect. When we're out of control, and we do things that we shouldn't do, and how many times have people said, I wish you Pray for me. I, I had a terrible wreck. And you go, oh, man, that's so terrible. Yeah, I know. I don't understand what God's doing. And then the more you talk, so you were drunk and you were hot uh, and you had a wreck. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and, and suddenly it's like you're trying to say, I don't know why God did that to me. Why would he? And you're going, well, why wouldn't he? You know? And it's terrible. How many times? I'm glad that when we're right with God, we can praise God. And we never have to worry about God having some sort of fit if you please. God is always in control. But when the devil comes in, it's amazing how we can get all messed up in a hurry. And so we need to be able to continue to praise God for his goodness to us. And as we praise God, let people see that, hey, it's really fun to serve God. And, and God is praiseworthy. In Psalms 150, verse 6, almost the, the last verse of the Psalms, says that everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Folks, I'm glad we can praise God. Aren't you? And I, I don't have to ever worry. It says, folks, I'm so sorry about the affair that God was having. I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to say. <laughs> That's never going to happen. Oh, I'm so sorry for the way God mistreated those people that were killing each other and that were, you know, uh, that's not going to happen. 
and I could just go on and on. But I'm saying that God is always praiseworthy. We can always praise him in every situation that we face. Man will let us down and has let us down. One verse, really, really, one of the shortest verses in the Bible. And everybody's going to say, oh, he's going to say, Jesus, and Jesus wept, or Jesus wept. No, 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 no. you ready? It's found in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. It's two words. Rejoice evermore. Two words. Rejoice evermore. I'm so glad I can rejoice in my Lord. Uh, I, I don't know how to put this with you. I have been embarrassed by things that our president has done. I have been embarrassed by things that our governor has done. I have been embarrassed by things that our mayor has done. I have been embarrassed by things that, no, never mind. I start saying things that y'all did. Y'all never embarrass me. <laughs> okay. But what I'm trying to say is God. We can never be embarrassed of him. We might be embarrassed of things that we did, but never because of him. We can rejoice evermore in the fact that he is our God and that he loves us and that he wants to bless us and that he blesses us. <laughs> wow. It, it just like he goes out his way because he does want to bless us because he loves us. What a great God we have. And then concerning the provisions or, or the position that we have as a saved person. As a saved person, I'm a child of God. Uh, I, I don't know how to sound, but I'm a prince. And so you might say, yeah, Pastor, you're a royal king, all right? <laughs> you know? But that makes you a princess or a prince because we are children of the king. And when I think of our position being saved, it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, and how many times have I quoted this through the years, and I, I love this verse in so many ways. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new Creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And how excited we can look at our life and see that it's been changed. That we're not the same person we used to be. That there's been a change that has taken place in our life, and other people can see that change and they can see the good that's happened in us. I look here, some other notes I have on here. When I think of the change and the fact to become a new creature, the position as a pastor, a pastor simply is to represent God to others, and then as we do so, we represent uh, uh, God to others too. I mean, it goes back and forth, and it's exciting. What we're able to do as a pastor, as we share the good news, as we become, uh, as it says in the scriptures, as a shepherd, as an over shepherd. It's exciting to be able to help to lead people into a better relationship with the Lord. And how many of you have we seen through the years that there's been a total change in you? And how exciting when we hear family members uh, that have watched and seen the change and they'll come and say, Pastor, uh, he's not the same person he used to be. He has really changed or she's really changed since the Lord's come into the life. And I love hearing that. I, I love hearing good reports of what people are doing in our church. But as a pastor, I, I want to bless you and I want to be a help. And then as teachers, the fact that you can rightly divide God's word of truth to others and help them so they can grow and understand more and more about our wonderful God. As deacons, that you have the opportunity to serve God and uh, in the church of God, that you have a special position uh, working in that, that special calling. And I think it's Stephen, the first deacon, and uh, also the first martyr and how that he was such a tremendous example of what a Christian should be. And then, uh, as I got listed here, singers. And what a blessing it is to hear somebody that sings with their whole heart. And sometimes maybe they may not have the best voice in the world. And I'm not picking on you, because I get a great voice. But they may not have the best sound voice in the world, but it's their spirit. And it just makes them sound so much better because it's coming from their heart. And uh, they want to sing and bring glory to God instead of to themselves. And so those things are exciting when we see the position that we have as a saved person. Well, I'm trying to say that God has something for everyone us to do. I, I appreciate uh, Chuck and Charlie now as they work here in the building to clean our building up and make it and 
you know, when a bill gets old, sometimes it doesn't clean up as easy as it used to. <laughs> There's things that happen, and I appreciate them being so conscientious as they, they work on it. It's just something that God has given to them to be able to do that. And then concerning the provisions of scriptural tithers, I think it's important for people to give so that God can bless them accordingly. And Philippians 4.19, it says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And how many times have we been in a situation, and Caleb can tell you, uh, those times I just had to uh, take this. I'm sorry we can't go see so-and-so because our car's not working. Okay, Dad, we'll pray for a new car. <laughs> and then the next thing, we'll take this. Uh, I just got a phone call. Dad, we just started praying. <laughs> And we got a good car waiting for us. And I, when I say new car, I mean a different car that's in better shape, okay? Yeah. And uh, that's the way it happens. And God is, a, and y'all know, y'all see that. Hey, how many times, you know, like the van we have here and then the, the car I'm driving right now, and we go along, and God gives us exactly what we need. And uh, because He owns it all, <laughs> you know? And again, maybe you can share similar type testimonies. Uh, or maybe even the same testimony, how God has given you things that you need, because he wants to show us and bless us and show the rest of the world that we have something that they need to have, and that's him. And then concerning the promise of the second coming, in Hebrews 10, 37, it says, For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Isn't excited to realize that Jesus is on his way? And that he could appear at any time we could have him here with us. Uh, and, and I can't help but think that he'll probably come during a scheduled church time, okay? <laughs> and uh, I think that would be a great time for him to show up. And, and of course, God can do what he wants to because he's God. But I, I'm thinking how many people would be embarrassed for him to show up. And they were doing something they shouldn't have been doing. They were somewhere they shouldn't have been and how embarrassing that would be. And so as we look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Folks, things get really bad. Things get really ugly out there. We can encourage each other saying, well, it means Jesus has got to be coming soon. Isn't that exciting? I mean, can it get any worse? And we can say, well, no, hey, hey, it can't get any worse. And that means he's got to come now. And folks, he's got to be coming soon. So we can get excited. About him. God says, we're for comfort one another with these words. Jesus is coming. And what a wonderful, wonderful thought that is. And our final thought, I didn't have to get through it all, but simply concerning the punishment of sinners. In Romans 6, 23, it says, where the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so isn't that exciting that uh, there's a punishment for the sinner? And uh, folks, we all deserve that punishment. But because of what Jesus did, he died for all the punishment. He died for every sinner, and he paid the price for all the sins that have ever taken place in this world. But the thing is, it's up to you to say, yes, Jesus, please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and be my Savior. And if we don't pray that prayer, God can save us. It's just that simple. Pray that simple childlike prayer. God wants to forgive you, but he's not going to force his plan of salvation on you. He's not going to force, if you please, uh, the what Jesus did for us on the cross. He's not going to force it. He gives you the ability to choose it or, or not to. And just like uh, as I was listening to uh, our, our son in law Matt on the phone, and the guy had read and studied that part. Uh, in the chronological teachings where it was talking about offering up the lamb for the sacrifice and everything. And, and basically, Matt said, well, have you done it? You need to do that. And he says, well, man, I, I, what did he say? I'd be a fool if I didn't do that. Yeah, I've done it. <laughs> because it just made such sense to take what Jesus did for us so that we wouldn't have to be punished because Jesus 
took it all for us. I'm glad that my punishment, <clears throat> Jesus, has taken care of me. I hate that he had to do it, but I'm glad that he did do it so that we could look forward to a wonderful time in heaven. And folks, I mean true with you, okay? And your pastor will always be true blue, okay? To you, I want to share the truth with you. And so let God be true. Don't accept the lies of Satan or this world or even of your own self or your own thought that you might go through, but accept the fact that God is true. And his way of salvation is the only way. There's no other way to heaven. But I'm so thankful there is a way to heaven and that there's nobody that's exempt from going to heaven. All can go, but they have to accept God's terms. And it's very simple. Acknowledge I'm a sinner and I need Jesus. And that's what moms do. And so, folks, there's our, our final time message, so to speak. Let God be true. And folks, <laughs> and what says even though it's worded that way, I don't think it's a matter of you let God be true. He's going to be true no matter what you do. He's always going to be true. We can always trust Him in every situation. So before we go any further, I want to go ahead and dismiss and pray. Lord, thank you for this time we can come together and study your word and help us to, to realize this is what it means the fact that you are true, that you are true, that you are the way, that we can trust you in every situation that may possibly come up. Thank you for loving us so much that you were willing to become one of us. You were willing to become your own creation to save your creation from their sins. Thank you, Lord. And we pray that you help us, that we'll be faithful to share the good news that Jesus saves. That simple prayer, dear God, forgive me my sins and come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. That's true. Help us to trust you and nothing else but you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Folks, God bless you. And I trust that you have a great week. Pray for us as we go visiting as we try to contact with people and thank the Lord for those that were uh, visiting Sunday and for others that plan on being here uh, as we'll see them soon here in our services too and I just pray that folks that have gotten away from the Lord that they'll get back where they need to be back in the right relationship.